Well, the brain trust that is the Wed Storm Team Weather Center, really just Stephen and I, were watching these clouds really push through the area because of those high winds that Haley's been giving me a hard time about in the entire Concho Valley. We're going to continue to see these winds, but they're going to be out of the south for the rest of the night before they start to turn out of the north, letting us know that that cold front is pushing over us and we're about to see those colder temperatures. Right now, we're looking outside at those current temperatures across the entire Concho Valley under these clear skies right now. 86 here in San Angelo, everybody else in those lower 80s, and we're going to begin seeing that uniform cool down under these clear skies, letting all that heat escape into tonight, dropping down into those 60s. But when we get a good look across the entire region, we're really seeing those warmer temperatures. Sterling City, 91, finally a nice break from some of that heat. And this is going to be the last hot day of the year. We're dropping down into those 80s as we make our way into that third week of October, but we're still seeing some of those 80s down here to the south. Now, when we get a good look at those temperatures compared to the rest of the nation, we have our eye. See how this moisture and that heat has moved off to the east, letting us know that cold front starting to push its way through. We're talking about that moisture that was going to be pulled up from Texas, continuing to make its way to the east and up into those northern areas. And already areas like Colorado and Wyoming seeing up to about seven to eight inches of snow. We've been tracking it all day as we continue to watch this next storm pushing in off the west coast where you do see those 70s hanging out on the west coast. When we're looking at that upper level pattern right now, we're still seeing this decaying low pressure system beginning to dissipate as the next one makes its way into their area, while finally we're looking at the next one making its way in off the west coast with a little bit of ridging that could push us into the 80s. We're going to watch as it continues to move across the nation, creating more of that zonal flow. Then we'll see that strong ridging where we're seeing that deep trough push all the way down to Florida. Now we're starting to watch some of that troughing push back in as the next storm makes its way into our area. That could drop us down even further into those overnight temperatures, into those lower 40s. Now we're watching the moisture that's going to push its way to the east. Remember that dry line setup, very similar in nature. And then we're going to watch more of that cold air push in behind it, push that moisture down to the south, and that could drop us down in those drier, cooler temperatures as we continue to make our way through this beautiful fall. But we're watching as Nebraska and areas like Florida are still under that severe weather warning. And when we take a look at the radar, tornado warnings being issued and tornado watches being issued for areas of central Nebraska and still areas across Florida being hit. But when you get a good look at the Concho Valley, clear skies, strong winds. And again, you're seeing how strong that powerful cold front is going to be where it's going to turn those winds out of the north. We're getting a good look at where this frontal system is beginning to develop right along Oklahoma and Kansas. Now, we look at how it's going to develop over the future. We're looking at Texas mostly. Watch how nothing really happens. Just some on-off afternoon cloud cover as every single time this moisture gets pulled up into the north. It just brings that cold, moist air back and forth in those afternoon hours. Then, as we make our way into the weekend, we're looking at nothing but clear skies around the solar eclipse and even into Sunday where we could still see some of those sunnier conditions. Now, that eclipse is going to begin at 11.55. It's only going to last about 4 minutes and 52 seconds. And I was talking to my digital media manager of the setup he's going to be using to capture a lot of these good shots for the area but quite a bit of logistics in there. Didn't really follow a whole lot of it, but by about 11.57, could reach total annular eclipse of about 80%. That means covering of the sun. And then by about 12.02, whole thing will be over. Looking at those temperatures hanging out in those upper 70s as we make our way towards the weekend. But of course, we're looking at those kickoff conditions too. But tonight, we're going to be dropping down into those 60s. Still windy, still cool. And tomorrow, much cooler of a day, letting us know that cold front pushing over. Still going to see those partly cloudy conditions. Still windy out of the north. And as we continue to make our way through the rest of the week, we're almost there to Friday. We're going to see those temperatures get even cooler as we start to make our way towards the weekend and finally to the solar eclipse. We're down into the 70s, and then we're going to slowly warm up with those post-frontal conditions. But look at those lows all the way down into those 40s, and then again into those upper 80s, as well as those low pressures or low temperatures, excuse me, hanging out in those upper 50s with rain on the horizon by next Thursday. We'll, take a, uh, we'll be back after the break. Case and news at 10.